hands over here, but in case you don't, it is the great Larry Kerwin. <laughs> How's everyone doing? <laughs> Frank McCourt was the greatest curmudgeon ever to come out of the bells of hell. And that saying something. <laughs> Until he married St. Ellen, and she made a beautiful person out of him. Ellen, you should have you should have married us all. <laughs> could use it. Frank hated any form of pretentiousness back in the Bells days, and um, one of his favorite pastimes was to get hayseeds like me to be his acolyte, and he would bring me over to a group of writers, and he would listen. And at the first utterance of pretentiousness, Frank would whisper to me, would you listen to that fucking <laughs> and then Frank would get his normal, traditional poker face, whereas I would be rolling around laughing and say, good man, Frank, and then the fucking Egypt would turn around and see me laugh, and I'd get blamed for the whole thing. <laughs> That's what Frank liked to do. One night, Pierce Turner, who was on earlier, uh, and myself, we got some tickets to go see David Bowie in the garden, and we asked a couple of young ones to come with us, they were very delighted to take to see David Bowie. So we dressed up to the nines. I always remember I had a purple velvet jacket on. I had more, I had so much mascara on that I looked like a baby raccoon. And I had a bright lipstick in front of me. And Frank saw this and he was looking at me thinking, what a poser. But I had to say to him, you know, Frank, you do anything to get laid these days. You know, things are, times are rough. You know? So we went off to um, we went off to the garden, Pierce and myself, and the two young ones. And on the way, I took just the smallest piece, just a teeny weeny little bit of LSD, just to spice up the evening. And um, David Boy was stunning. I'd never seen him be like this before. But uh, if David was stunning, I apparently wasn't because the young one that I was with left me. <laughs> I ended up back in the Bells of Hell. And as I was coming in the door, I had the song Heroes by Bowie was bursting through my head. And Frank saw me come to the door and he said, come here, young fellow. And he sat me down and he told me the story. And as he was telling me the story, the acid was really kicking in. Frank's face was pulsing. All sorts of colors were coming out. But the story was amazing. My jaw was open. I never said a word. When I read Angela's Ashes, I realized that what I had heard was kind of the template of it. So um, every time I'm associated with Angela's Ashes or read it, I still hear David Bowie's heroes pounding in my head. I met David some years after that and told him this story. And he wasn't the least bit phased. He said, you know, because David didn't believe in any kind of coincidence. He said that heroes could just as well have been written about Belfast as about Berlin. And that the two cities had divided communities and had walls between them. And when I heard Dave of David's death, I wrote down, because I'd forgotten all about the story, I wrote down some words, an arrangement, that this is for two heroes, David Bowie and my dear curmudgeonly friend, Frank McCourt. <laughs> Just for 